gas, much of it increasingly hard to reach, has produced a technological breakthrough in Norway. Engineers there have built the world's largest underwater machine, which has been lowered onto the seabed. It's expected to pump around 20 billion pounds worth of gas, which would otherwise have been left untapped. From Norway, our environment analyst Roger Harabin reports. Dwarfing the buildings on a Norwegian fjord, a structure the size of a football pitch. The frame for what's said to be the world's biggest underwater machine. This monster will be towed 125 miles out to sea and sent plunging to the bottom. It's being built to turn an exhausted gas reserve into a richly productive reserve by pumping it harder than it's ever been pumped before. We recover gas for more than 30 billion US dollars which would have been left in the reservoirs if we hadn't developed this project. Normally a platform above the sea would be used to pump gas from an offshore gas field. Putting the compressor close to the source of the gas means they can get much more gas and at lower cost. Statoil eventually hopes to put many offshore facilities under the waves. But there is a downside to this marvel of technology. It's part of an industry that governments agree is steadily changing the climate. Clearly, it makes sense for the firm to squeeze as much gas as they can out of an existing field. But companies have bigger ambitions to find more coal, oil and gas all around the world, even though mainstream scientists are warning that we can't burn the fossil fuels we've already found if we want to protect the climate. We've discovered coal, oil and gas that will emit nearly 3,000 billion tonnes of the greenhouse gas CO2. Less than a third of this can be burned if we want to stick within agreed danger limits for the climate. It's still a huge mindset problem, especially within the oil companies and the oil states, that they think kind of the only rational way forward is to continue to look for more to the last barrel. So our challenge in the society is to not use the oil, gas and coal that has already been discovered. But there may be a get out thanks to experimental plants like this one, further north in Norway. It takes the exhaust gases from a power station and using chemicals, it captures the CO2 so it doesn't escape and warm the atmosphere. We need this technology to be widespread if we want to burn fossil fuels whilst also tackling climate change. But it is years behind schedule. You know that we have technology available today to remove 90% of the CO2. However, the technology is too expensive and there is no economic drive in the system to, to push technology and technology development. The firm says if governments want this technology, they'll have to force it to happen. Meanwhile, the relentless hunt for fossil fuels continues. It took the world's biggest offshore crane to maneuver the statoil structure into place. The firm will win billions if this monster of the deep delivers its riches. The project is glamorous, high profile, exciting. Worrying about climate change will have to wait. Roger Harabin, BBC News, Norway. The Chancellor, George Osborne, has been defending plans to subsidise childcare vouchers for working parents.